He is a nationally acclaimed herbalist, iridologist, uh, lecturer, and he just he knows most of it. I say knows it all, and he always nobody knows it all. <laughs> I say knows it all. And you know, what I don't know, I call him in California to find out. And he is here from California to be with us so that we can learn. And just again, just thank Dr. Burton so much. It was funny, I gotta tell you this. I, when I asked Dr. Burton to do this, he said, you asking me, he said, I've got three practices. He said, and you, you asking me to leave my three practices to go where? <laughs> so it was so funny, but it shows the love he has for his people to do this. So I tell you, it's wonderful. It's, yeah, that's right, young yeah, man, that's great. It's a wonderful, isn't it? Oh. And Tim Mara, that's, that's, that's my buddy, my old standby. He knows to be here. He doesn't have much of a choice. <laughs> but anyway, it's just great. So that's Tim Morrow. Give him a round of applause. And I tell you, he's going to tell you. That's the way they do it. They tell you. So you're not. Well, good evening, everybody. Good evening. I bring you greetings from the University of Common Sense at Hawthorne, California. And uh, the reason why I talk, call it the common sense is because on my letterhead I have, I have, um, I have uh, University of Common Sense, and under it is written Man's God Sense. Does that make sense? Yeah. That's the, the sense that God gave us. That's, that's what he gave. Just like he gave animals instinct, he, uh, he gave us, he didn't leave us defenseless either. And so it's just really important to understand it. People say everybody doesn't have common sense. Oh, yes, they do. Everybody has common sense, but you don't have to use it. Okay? But we all have it because it's a, it's, a, it's a gift from God. I was very, very moved by the doctor and what he was talking about up here because this is things that I've talked about uh, for the last 12 years. Uh, I want to give you some. I want to give you some real information to begin with, so that you can understand that what our bodies are really and truly like. Our bodies are magnificent. It is the crowning glory of God's finished works. Not the Milky Way, but the human body. It is the crowning glory of God's work, and it. It is magnificent in everything it does. And the other thing is, it is your humble servant. Everything it does is to serve you. Ever been laying in bed and, and, and it was so cozy and comfortable in there, and you're going, wow. Body's saying, oh, it's so good in here. Let's lay here forever. I just love this. And then you get up and you go out and you go running and the body goes, wow, this is great. Let's just continue to run forever. Why? Because the body wants to do whatever you're doing. It is your humble servant. It never attacks you. It never attacks you. You do never get a heart attack. We attack the heart, the heart gives up. But the heart does not attack us, and nothing else attacks us. The body is your humble servant. I'm going to give you three things about the body that you'll want to remember forever. So, so you'll know that no matter how sick you are, there's always the chance of a recovery. Okay? Number one is every 90 days, we have new blood. Every 90 days. Every 11 months, every cell in our body is new. That means every 11 months, you got a new heart, new spleen, new lung, new brain, new kidneys. And every two years, every bone in our body is new. That's three things you should know right there. Now, when I tell people that, you know what they say? If that's true, how can we grow old? Which is a pretty valid question. huh? Every 90 days, we have new blood. Every 11 months, every cell in our body is new. That means every organ is new. And every two years, 
All our bones are new. We get rid of one billion dead cells an hour. Every hour that we live, we get rid of one billion dead cells, and each one of those cells is replaced by a new cell. We get rid of one billion dead cells an hour. Do you know what the difference between a million and a billion is? They ain't even close. A million minutes, a million minutes is nine days. A billion minutes is 33 years. They're not even close. And I didn't say we get rid of one million cells. We get rid of one billion cells. One billion cells an hour. And each one is replaced. And that's all the days of our life until we die. And that is all those that blood, bones, and cells being replaced. Okay? And they go out via one of the channels of elimination, the colon, the lungs, the kidneys, of the skin, and for the female, the vaginal tract. So we're always rebuilding ourselves every minute. People say to me, how in the world then do we grow old? That's, a, that's truly a valid question. And we grow old because we continue to use the same worthless junk to rebuild the cells, the blood, and the bones. You cannot build a new cell you cannot build a good cell with Wonder Bread. Simply cannot be done. The cow didn't eat Wonder Bread, even though the cow did eat the same thing from the same field that you did, but the cow ate it like it was. You took it to the mill, bleached it, dyed it, embalmed it, and then buried it in the belly. You're not going to get the same results. The cow's breath smells good, its coat is clear, and all the nourishment, and we, we get sicker and sicker from that same thing that we ate from that field. That's what we did to ourselves. We did that whether as out of ignorance or knowledge, the end result was still the same. I want you to know that death met by ignorance is just as final as if met by knowledge. Okay? And that's the, that's the bottom line. That's the reason why God said my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. But how long can we plead this inexcusable ignorance? Because it's not up to the doctor to make you well. Do you, are you aware of that? It is not up to any, it's not up to your mother to make you well. Or your father, or your sister, or your brother. It's up to the individual to be well. It is, and if you don't know how to take care of yourself, then that must mean you must learn to take care of yourself. I'm going to tell you something. God's not going to ask the doctor about your health. He's going to ask you. He's going to ask you to give account of you. When you go, Lord, it was my doctor. He said, couldn't you see that your doctor was in worse shape than you? <laughs> How would you possibly let somebody who looked like your doctor take care of you? And that's, the, that's what the bottom line is. My health is my responsibility. And I can't shun it. I cannot stand before God and say to him, God, I didn't know. Because I'd be lying to him in the face because I do know how to take care of myself. All I can say to him is I have no excuse. And I don't want to stand before God and say that. He gave me this body and I'm to give it the best that I can. I'm supposed to take care of it the best way that I know how. If the doctor is responsible for your health, does you know, you know what that means? That means that you then are relieved of that responsibility. So God can't punish you. <laughs> he can't do anything to you because he left your health up to somebody else. And they were the one that failed. No, as adults, we reach even the age of reasoning. We don't have to be adults. The age of reasoning. It becomes our responsibility to take, to take care of ourselves. We've done what we've done with food. We've destroyed the body with food. White rice, white sugar, pastas, pizzas, meat, spaghetti, macaroni, cheese. All those things that we love so dearly and we want to cling to, our little sweetheart things that we want to hold on to, is costing us our life. But more than anything else, it costs us the quality of our life. Right here, I want to pause for a second because I want to do something that should have been done a long time ago. Um, we're all here on this journey, on this, on this, on this trip because of the first lady here, <laughs> Dr. Ion. You know, she's she's planned this thing. She's put it together. She's worked hard. And this is the second 
cetera. She gives away uh, awards as the best man of the year and the best woman of the year and all that, but nobody gives her anything. And I'd like to take this minute for everybody in this room to give her a hand for what she has done and how she's gone about it. I love it. She does an excellent job. She doesn't ask for any praise for it and all that. You know, I mean, she's always busy. She's always doing something. She's always at something. And you notice that when Christ came to earth and worked in and, and worked with the disciples, do you notice that he never went down to Skid Row and got guys that wasn't doing anything? He never went to the institutes of higher learning and got those people either. He got people that were busy doing things. Fishermen. I mean, he called many of them away from their job. They were busy working because busy people always find time to do, to get things done. And that's what she does. You know, and, and I mean, I really enjoy that in her and, I, and I'm sure that we all appreciate that. And I just wanted to kind of let you, let you know we do appreciate you. Okay? So I just wanted to pause here for a second. I was going to do that before I got started, but she went out the door. <laughs> Busy doing something. <laughs> so uh, let's, let's get back to the business at hand, because I don't want to bore you with a long, soporific lecture, but we're here to learn something. And what knowledge I have, I'm willing to share that knowledge because God gave me that knowledge. He didn't charge me for it either. He, he gave me that knowledge. And I feel that the only way that I can fill up with more knowledge is get rid of that that I have. You know, and, and God fills you up with it. And I want, I want you to know something. God never made it complicated for us to take care of ourselves. It is not complicated. It is not complicated to take care of yourself. There is cause and effect for everything. For everything. God is not going to, to befuddle us by giving us a disease that we've got to search 30 years to find the answer. No. It's all very basic and very simple. What the doctor talked about, parasites, is one of the biggest problems in this country today. But let me tell you what a parasite is. Or let me say it better than that. Let me tell you what the job of a parasite is. You already know what a parasite is because we got parasites in our own family. But let me tell you what the job of a parasite is. He has one job on earth, one job, and that is to clean up waste. He has no other job on earth. His job is to clean the waste. If you have a clean body, a parasite will starve to death. But that's his only job on earth is to clean. Let me give you a let me give you a case in point. Has anybody ever had a canister of flour sitting in the kitchen, left it closed for a little while, and then open it up, and there's these worms crawling through it? Now, what is that worm in there for? The nutrition in there, and how did he get there? How do you that that can's been sealed, been closed? How did he get there? Huh? Absolutely. There is a condition that must be met. That's all it is, a condition that must They did not crawl in that can. Their presence in there is for one thing, and that is there's no nutrition in there. Parasites don't, ha don't eat nutrition. They don't have, they don't, they, don't, they don't have, they don't eat nutrition. You see a worm on, a, on, a, on some foliage, he's there for the same reason you'd eat that foliage to get nutrition from it. But a parasite is not a parasite. That parasite inside of that can, what happened was conditions were met. L like, let's say, um, nature has conditions that have to be met. And when those conditions are met, all kinds of different things happen. Let's take fog, for instance. Fog does not necessarily roll in off of a big body of water. If you're in Kansas, there ain't no big bodies of water in Kansas but they will have severe fog. The reason is because at night when it cools off, the, 
the cool air over the warm ground that has been heated up creates a vapor. And when that condition is met, you get fog. Well, that's the same thing that happens in that canister. What happens is that, that, that parasite is there for one reason, and that is to eat up the chemical that bleached that stuff white. That's his only reason there. And, and when it's done, he's gone. Uh, when it's done, he dies. The last thing you see on the jungle floor is the maggots. That's the last thing that happens. When their job is done, the maggot dies. So his job is to eat up waste and nothing else on earth. People say, well, then that's good. <laughs> He's going to eat up the waste in our body. Well, do you know what his other job is? What, what, he, what he's called? He's called nature's undertaker. It's nature's undertaker. His presence in our body says, I'm here to take you back to the earth that you came from to make you over in a perfect form. He's not your friend. He's not your ally. He's not your buddy. He does not belong there. Do you know why it's so prevalent in this country? Because of processed food. Processed food. The side effect of processed food is that it leaves a film on everything it touches, starting with your teeth. Eat a piece of white bread, you feel the film. Run your tongue over your teeth, you feel the film on your teeth. Remember now, you swallowed it. Right? That film goes everywhere. When you swallow it, it goes down the esophagus into the colon. It finally spills over into our bloodstream and is taken to every part of our body. Now the little individual cells that we are get so gummed up that now we become sick. It's glue. Don't you know you remember you hang wallpaper with white flour? You hang wallpaper with it. So it's pure glue. That, the more that we eat, the thicker it makes us. One of the other things it does, it does two awesome things. Number one is it constipates us to no end. That's number one. And number two is it builds up mucus at such an alarming rate in our lives that that mucus at the end of our life make us sick. We lay down, that mucus spills over into our windpipe inside and we drown in our own mucus. That's what the death rattle is. You hear people talk about the death rattle? Ask the doctor back there. He's seen enough people die. And he's heard that he literally drowning in the mucus that the body is so weak that you can no longer cough and bring it up. And so it spills over into our windpipe and we drown. Do you know how that's how 85% of the population in this country dies is by drowning in their own mucus. And in the hospital, 100% of the people who die in there die by drowning in their own mucus. Because pneumonia is a hospital disease. You can go to the hospital well and get out with pneumonia because it is, it is an iatrogenic disease. I don't know if you know what the term iatrogenic means. But it's doctor-induced diseases. Diseases doctors give us trying to get us well from what we originally went to them for. And while it doesn't seem very big, there is between 8 and 15 million cases a year of people being readmitted into the hospital for something that the doctor calls. And between 50,000 and 350,000 of us die each year from iatrogenics from, not from your so-called disease, but from taking the wrong, being given the wrong drug, and what happens to that individual person from that drug, and that drug takes us out of this life, but quickly. Not from the so-called disease that we had, but just the fact that we visited the doctor. That's the truth of the matter to that. I'm going to tell you something, folks. It becomes increasingly important 
for people of color to understand that. The medical field says we are right 42% of, uh, of, of the time in our diagnosis of you. That means 58% of the time they're wrong. Now that ain't really bad. 58% of the time is not really bad, but it means 58% of the time you're taking a drug that you never needed. That's what makes it bad. And you heard the doctor talk about penicillin and how penicillin has been the miracle drug forever. Do you know what penicillin is today? Penicillin is the icing on the AIDS cake. It is what has brought AIDS to what it is right now. The immunization program is what got this started. Immunization, which is about 123 years old now. And then with the introduction of penicillin, penicillin dries everything it touches. Dries up everything that it touches. And it, what it does is it creates glue. Now you hear about yeast. Yeast is the side effect of that processed food that we've eaten. But let me tell you why nobody talks about that. Because when you talk about processed food, you are talking about Aunt Jemima, Betty Crocker, General Mills, General Foods, Beatrice Food. You're talking about some of the biggest, country, the biggest companies on earth, and nobody wants to offend them. Well, I ain't got nothing to lose by offending them. And I'm just telling you what's going on. The stuff that they put in is, and not, it's bad enough what they give us, but there's also one other thing that they've added to us. The doctor mentioned that also a while ago. He mentioned where it came from. It's called, how many of you heard the word W-H-E-Y? Way. Yeah. Way. Yeah. You'll see it in everything. Do you know what way really is? Whey is the putrid, foul-smelling waste that comes from making cheese. It's a byproduct of milk. In the North Country up in um, Wisconsin, America's dairy land, there is mountains of it. Mountains of it. Because we're a big cheese-eating country. There's mountains of it. The government your friend, the government, financed the study to find out what could they do with this way. Because the way is so thick they can't bury it underground because it affects the underground supply of water. Believe it or not, most of our water comes from underground. They can't put it in the Great Lakes. The Great Lakes are so bad now that most of them don't even flow. You realize that Lake Michigan is 50 miles across 50 miles across Lake Michigan, and Lake Michigan almost does not flow anymore. Fish are dead, and anything that gets in there is dead. And I don't know whether you know it or not, but did you know that the Five Great Lakes is the largest supply of fresh water on Earth? It's the largest supply of fresh water on Earth. It is polluted to the point that not even fish can live in it. So we can't drink it. But nonetheless, this way they can't put it in there, so the government financed the study to find out what to do with it. Guess what they found that they could do with it? They sell it back to us. They sell the waste, and it's found in everything from babies' teething rings to Aunt Jemima pancake mix. All the protein powders, that's for... It's a twofold thing in it. Number one is it's that glue called whey. That's number one. Number two, it's from milk. So what do you have in there? You got penicillin and you got steroids. That's the reason why as a nation we've become so large. Because number one is cow's milk is made for the bulk of the calf. The calf is going to weigh a ton. And so it's made for the bulk of the calf. So immediately humans are going to get bigger because they're drinking something that molecular structure is so large. So they're going to get large from that. Add to it the fact that it is pasteurized and homogenized and is, is totally without life in it whatsoever. 
and then add to that the fact that they have put in the penicillin and they put in the steroids. The steroids is to make the animal grow large because it's so, you know, beef is so on the hoof. And the more it weighs, the more money they get for it. That's what's going on in this country, and that's what we're doing. We're drinking that milk, we're eating those dairy products, and we're getting larger and larger and wondering what in the world is with it. You realize that they give steroids, see, these guys that bodybuild, they give them the steroids to blow them up, blows them up. Every one of those steroids is, guess where it's found? It's found in all those female, all those female uh, drugs. Uh, the progesterone the, and all the other stuff is, is found in there. Incidentally, have any of you ladies in here ever uh, taken uh, Primarin? The drug Primarin? It's a female hormone. I just want you to know what it's made from. It's made from uh, a pregnant mare's urine. That's a pregnant horse's urine. That's what it's made for. So, if you know somebody that has their own horse horn, you can go out and catch your own primary. <laughs> but the horse has to be pregnant. <laughs> I'm telling you, folks, what we've done to ourselves is we've done it mostly out of ignorance. But the bottom line is that means we've got to start to learn something about our bodies, about ourselves, and how to take care of it. That's the reason for these sessions, but not just these sessions. Jethro Claus wrote a book, I don't know how many years ago, called Back to Eden. It is just as timely today as it was the day he wrote it. You know why? Truth never changes. Truth always remains. While the medical field may be changing all the time and finding new things, God doesn't have to change and find nothing because what he makes stands. And the herb is under direct order from that same commander-in-chief of the universe. It has to do the job that it is intended to do. If it doesn't do the job, if it doesn't do the job it's intended to do, it means you can't trust God. Amen. That's exactly what it means. It's got to do the job that it's intended to do. And while you got people that will tell you that, oh no, man has to add something, how does man improve upon what God's done? It's impossible. Our grandparents, our great-grandparents, they kept us well with those herbs. And nothing has changed. It's still the same today as it was. We may have left the herbs, but the herbs never left us. And those properties that is in that herb is still there. They've, it's always been there, and it's there now. And people go, wait a minute, hold on. Now the topsoil is depleted and all these different things are happening. Let me give you a, let me give you a little scenario. Out in Kansas, where some of the best wheat in the world grows, mm -hmm. because the topsoil is so depleted, they know that alfalfa grows 40 feet into the earth to pick up the nutrition that it needs. But because the topsoil is so depleted, they now find alfalfa growing 250 feet into the earth to pick up the nutrition that it needs. I don't know if you know what that means, but let me tell you what it means. It means that if that plant has the intelligence to go 250 feet into the earth to get what it needs, it also has the intelligence to abort itself if it doesn't find what it needs. Which means that if it grows above the surface, if it's harvestable, it's got to have what God said it has to have in it. That's just as simple as that. And besides, I'd rather trust God's ignorance than man's greatest intelligence. I still believe that a bad potato is still better than a good steak. You know? And it calls for us to do some research for ourselves. And that's, that's, that's literally what I do. I just find out for myself, you know how I got in this field? In self-defense. I got in this field in self-defense. I had a prostate problem. At the age of 43, I had a prostate problem that was so bad, it used to swell the testicle at least once a year. And I had that for five years. I went to the doctors for five years. I had treatments and everything but hospitalization, everything but surgery. I wouldn't let them do surgery on me. One morning after five years, I woke up 
And I was going to the clinic, and as I got to my car and got ready to open the door, this voice said to me, you got to take care of yourself. Now, there was nobody around me nowhere, but this voice was so loud and so clear that I said out loud, I sure do. <laughs> and I went to the clinic that morning, and I'm sitting there looking at all these experts sitting around these tables. I've seen these seven guys sitting around this table for so many years that I'm sick of them. And they're all trying to get me to have surgery. And I'm sitting there looking at them that morning and listening to them talk because they talk like you're so stupid. And they're so intelligent. You know, it talks like you're not in the room. <laughs> and, and, I, and I listened to, and, I got a, and I stood up. And that was the only thing that got their attention was that I stood up and one of them said, where are you going? And I said, I'm getting out of here. <laughs> the guy goes, wait a minute, we got a room ready to do surgery on you this morning. And I said, you did that for me? And he goes, yeah, we did. I said, well, so is that room won't be a total loss. You do surgery on him because you're not doing no surgery on me. I said, in fact, you are all fired. You stay here. I'm leaving. And I left that morning. Now, let me tell you something. I didn't know where I was going, but I did know where I wasn't going. I wasn't going back in there, so that committed me. I was committed now to do something. I didn't know where to go, know what to do, so I went to the library, and I pulled out everything that started with the letter P for prostate. I didn't find an answer to my, my, my problem, but let me tell you what I did find out that morning, because God, God kind of leaves you in degrees, you know, whatever you can absorb for the minute, you know. I found out some real pertinent things that morning. Number one was I found out men in Europe don't have prostate problems. Less than one-tenth of one percent of the population ever have surgery on the prostate. Number two was I found out men in, in Europe eat from boyhood until they die a handful of pumpkin seeds every day. That's a delicacy. That's one of the things that they have. I found out also that morning that men carry their, um, their um, zinc in the prostate and the testes. And this is where I was having my problem. So I found myself a week or so later standing in a um, um, health food store. Didn't know, what I was, didn't know what I was doing in there. But I just found myself standing there. And these two ladies were talking. One was a customer and one owned the store. They were talking to each other. And one of them got to talking about, she was an iridologist. Well, I didn't know what an iridologist was. But as they talked about it, I could, I could tell it was something to do with the eye. So I asked the lady about doing iridology on me. And she said, yeah. And she, I said, how much you charge? She says, $10. <laughs> so she did the iridology on me. She put the light in the glass up to my eye. She said, my God, what have they done to your prostate? Now here's a woman that didn't know my name, but she saw that prostate problem. They hadn't done anything to it uh, other than just taking drugs. They hadn't done anything to it. But the lady put me on a herbal program. And in two days, the herb was able to do what drugs couldn't do in five years. Amen. We're talking about 48 hours. And let me tell you the reason why I knew that I had something totally different was because, you remember I said that it, once a year it used to swell the right testicle to the point that all I could do was sit down. I couldn't do anything. I had, I had no clothes on and nothing. I had to sit down because it was that painful. They'd give me antibiotics and stubbornly it would go down. That, no matter how much it went down, the tenderness never disappeared in it. And 48 hours after I took the herbs, the tenderness disappeared for the first time in five years. So I knew I had latched onto something. Now, I didn't even know what herbs were, folks. I didn't even know what they were. But I got to thinking about it that morning as I sat there and had this absolute relief that I hadn't known in five years. And, and of course, I was not expecting anything. I was not expecting anything from these herbs. But it happened. It wasn't like I was planning on getting something. I just started taking the herbs because the woman, what did I have to lose? Nothing else had worked. And, uh, and I started thinking about it. I'm saying to myself, well, 
well, how come the doctors couldn't find it? How come the medicine, they, how come it didn't work? And I jumped from that to finally I said, okay, this came right out of the earth. I go, all right, who's in charge of the earth? And I go, oh, yeah. I figured if this herb knew that I had a problem with my prostate, there had to be an herb out there for every so-called illness that we had. And folks, it is there. It is there. And what's more is, it is not hidden from anybody. It is not reserved for any group of people on earth. It is reserved for individual people like you and me. And one time, our, our, our grandparents they, and our great-grandparents, they had that. It's still available. It still does the same thing today as it did before. We have got to realize that that's what we have got to do. In the next, in, in, by 1995, you're going to see a major, major change in herbs. In fact, one of the things you're probably going to see is you're probably going to see the insurance companies start paying a little bit for herbs and for alternative care. But by the turn of the century, drugs is going to be the alternative. Drugs is going to be the alternative. Herbs are going to be in, and I mean, the AMA, the, uh, the FDA, the, the pharmaceutical industry, it doesn't matter who steps out on the way of this. This is God's movement, and nobody is going to stop it. This movement is going any, every useless thing will drop dead eventually of its own useless weight. And that's what's beginning to happen. That's the reason why hospitals are advertising now. Is because people are very disenchanted. Plus, we are being, we are being priced out of the field. And let me tell you something. That's the greatest blessing that we could have. Is to be priced out of the field. Just priced out of drugs whatsoever. We just simply cannot afford them. That's the best thing that could happen to us. Uh, that's God's way of blessing us. And sometimes we curse him for blessing us, for not being able to afford it. You know, when we were, when we, when we lived in the, when our grandparents and great-grandparents and we lived in the, in the, in the, on the farm, we never suffered with any of this. We were too poor to eat rich. Now, we're too rich to eat poor. All that stuff that we had today, that's what God gave us. That's ethyl fuel. Yes. That is ethyl fuel. God wanted us to have only the best. He wanted us to have only ethyl fuel. We have chosen the other way. We have chosen this ugly, stinking, rotten food that makes us overweight, we as a nation are almost where the Roman Empire was when it fell. Sterile, degenerate, worn out, devoid of vigor. We've been made soft by rich, effortless living. And it's payday. It's time to pay for yesterday when we were young. You know this payday? Payday always comes when you can least afford to pay. When we've made ourselves the sickest. Change has to come. You know how change is going to come? Not by the government coming by your house and knocking on your door and saying, okay, it's time to change. No, it's going to be coming. Individual people like you. The government's the worst enemy that we have. They're worse than the Ku Klux Klan. And I'll kid you not, they're the worst people that we have. That's the reason why they're always doing experiments on us without our knowledge. You understand? Do you read about this, those black men during the Second World War? Or they, they, they did, uh, yeah, yes, experiment on us. They're, you think that that's going nice and going and past? They're doing the same thing exactly today. Nothing's changed, folks. Change is what we're going to do. If you have any interest whatsoever in helping people, you've entered the right field at the right time because there is a big need for people who are honest and who can realize that this is going to be a big field. When the medical field falls flat on its face, and it will, it is going, there's going to have to be a lot of people like us that can help your neighbor 
teach him what he needs to use. And whatever you know tonight, whatever you've learned tonight, remember you know more than your neighbor. You can help him with what little knowledge that you have. And whatever knowledge you share with them will gain you more knowledge. But it is people helping people. It is not organizations helping people. Organizations who call themselves helping people are helping themselves. You understand? It is up to us as individuals to help each other to be well and to support each other because let me tell you when you get into this field and you start helping somebody get well your family your friends everything else is going to go stone against you when you don't go down that medical route so I say to you if you're helping somebody don't tell nobody what you're doing do it just do it. Don't tell nobody what you're doing because the very person that you thought was on your side and would go along with you, they're not going to do it. I told my brother, I told my brother six, six or six, eight years ago, I said, Ray, I said, if you allow them to do that surgery on you, you're going to be a cripple. This doctor says, bring your family in. Bring your family and let them talk to me. And I'll, well, that was the worst mistake he could make. Because I asked him, you know, is he going to be crippled? Well, no, he won't be crippled. I said, well, then can you give me three people that you've done this search? Oh, no, no, no. That's the relationship between the doctor and the patient. You know what I mean? So, well, can you call, let them talk to me on the phone? No, 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 no. We don't do that. I said to my brother. I said, you're going to be a cripple. He's going to make a cripple out of you. He can't help it because they're talking about joint replacement. I said, you're going to be a cripple. And uh, today, my brother is severely crippled. Severely crippled. When the, when, it was, <laughs> when the surgery was over, my, 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 brother, um, my brother said to the doctor, well, he, he said, uh, you said I wouldn't be crippled. And the doctor goes, well, I ain't God, you know. He said you were before the surgery. <laughs> He's telling him how wonderful he was going to be, how his life was going to be transformed, and how wonderful. He's exactly what I mean. He's severely crippled today. And he's younger than I am. He's my, he's my younger brother. He's right under me, the one under me. Doesn't, I'm telling you, it just doesn't compute what is going on in the medical field. But none of us, not one of us, has to be a victim. Because that's a choice. That is a choice. Each one of us can make that choice. I made that choice to take care of myself. Because if I'm going to die at the hands of somebody, let it be me. I'll be a lot more merciful than anybody else I know. If I'm going to kill myself. You understand? We have to take responsibility for our health. And that's the one thing we don't do. Let me tell you one other thing before I close. Of all the people, of all the people in this country, let me tell you who has the greatest, or let me ask you something. Does, does anybody in this room, other than the doctor, I know he knows, know what the harvest is? <laughs> I know you. Does anybody know what the harvest is? No, it's used in the medical field. It is transplants. That is such a lucrative field <coughs> that they now have a new death. It's called brain dead. That means that the person is still alive. It means that the person is still alive and they can start removing parts from a living person. Because what most black people don't realize is that when they ask you for donor parts, you cannot die a natural death and they take your parts. It has to be accidental. That's the reason why they want your uh, donor card on the back of your driver's license. So if you're killed at the scene, they can start ripping out parts. If you're not killed at the scene, they can start ripping out parts. Okay? Yes. But what is it called? Advanced directives. Don't they have some? Fabulous names that you'd figure, though, man, that's got to be one of the nicest things that's ever happened to us. Advanced directions. Well, folks, you understand what I'm saying to you? If your name, if you've donated parts on your license, go down tomorrow and get rid of it. 
I'm telling you because it is a that is a lucrative field. And guess who has the best of all the people in this country? Guess who got the best parts to transplant? People of color. People of bad a shape as we in. <laughs> Don't that tell you what shape they're in? <laughs> bad a shape is when we got the best parts to transplant. They don't want nothing to do with us until it's time to die, and then they want our parts. Okay? So I'm saying to you, start taking care of yourself. The hospital is not the place. Oh, yeah, if you think I'm kidding, stop by any hospital and see the people in there and see if that's where you want to be. And stop by any of them old folks home and see if that's where you want to be. That ain't where you want to be, folks. It is now and always has been survival of the fittest. Nothing's changed, folks. Survival is what you do for yourself. That's the reason why I've chosen to take care of myself. My health has, in the last 14 years, it has flourished. I'm in better health than I've ever been in my life, even though I'm older than I've ever been. I've never been older than I am right now. But I'm telling you that I'm in better health than I've ever been. I can do some of the things at 60 that I couldn't do at 30. And I do it with a lot more class, too. It's up to each individual. My ignorance kept me sick. My knowledge has gotten me well. I never want to get well again. I just want to stay well. My message to you is that growing old does not make us sick. It is growing sick that makes us old. And that is truly the bottom line, folks. Okay? If I can, I'll answer a few questions before I turn it over to my friend here. What? No questions? You want to pass out the test, test paper? <laughs> 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 yeah. Yes. Um, yes. 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 But, but I didn't start off that way. I didn't start off that way. I mean, I... deal with meat eaters to lecture the people. I don't have a meat eater. In front of you and tell you something I couldn't trust them. So they don't know meat today. No. <laughs> but I didn't start off that way. I was a true meat eater. In fact, there was times before I got into this field that all I had on my plate was just meat. No potatoes, no nothing, just meat. You know what I mean? I remember one time when I was married. Golly, that had to be 25 years ago. My wife gave me a plate. Give me a, a, a plate with no meat on it, and I threw it through the plate glass window. That's why people who eat meat act. <laughs> 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 what do you expect? <laughs> but, 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 so don't you ever give me a plate with no meat on it. Never. And now today I can't stand the smell it cook. I can't either. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, that means you can get rid of arthritis. So then it's not necessary for all these hip replants. No. No. Nor kidney replants. No. We all we got a new set of many. It's just what we built it with. It is if you decide for right now, start right now and that you're going to drink coffee and eat donuts for the next two years, at the end of two years, you're going to have coffee and donut bones. Because that's what you built it with. You can't run better than the fuel that you use. Isn't that simple? That's how simple God made it. And you know what? Some of us is going to say, some of us is going to say to God when we stand before him, but Lord, I didn't know that. And God's going to say, don't you remember when I sent you my servants don't you remember when I sent you my servants to tell you about? And you know, I said, but Lord, I didn't believe it. I was saying, but the biggest part of the plan of salvation was faith. You know, that's the biggest part of the plan of salvation. So it's the things that we have to do for ourselves. Uh, I was supposed to have a knee operation. The right knee, I've been putting it off for about a year. And, uh, I don't think Better keep on. Better, but it throws me down. It throws me down a lot. Just stand up and be looking and down I go. How much? So last year I had a one, I think it's 40 seasons of a, what's that stuff they put in? Cardio.
cortisone. Yeah, cortisone. Yeah. Last April. <laughs> and this, and this hand, it took the skin off the wrist. I'm wondering what to do about this knee operation since this that you're tall. Number one. Should I still plan to have this operation? <laughs> Let me tell you because something. I've been Don't. Off and I was, I made up my mind to go in September. But only person that's going to get anything from that surgery is a guy that does it. He's going to lie in his pockets. At the end of it. It's, it's going to get worse. It's going to get worse. Right now you're in a bad dream. You have that surgery, you're going to enter a nightmare. You understand? And it's very simple. It's very simple things that you can do. Number one is start cleansing. Let me tell you something. If you're new here and you don't know where to start, you start by working with the colon. The colon is the sewage system. If you don't get rid of the sewage, I don't care what you do, how much it costs, how elaborate it is, or how many experts you have. If you don't take care of the colon, the sewage system, you will not, uh, you will not get well. You will not approach getting well. You're living in a dream. It's going to turn into a nightmare on you. So you start with the colon. Eat. Just starting with the colon will start to make the knee feel better. And then when you add things like calcium to it. Calcium is found in alfalfa, comfrey. It's found in almost every herb. And it's easy to ingest. Calcium is a large, it has a large molecular structure. So it's rather hard to ingest. But it is herbal calcium that will be absorbed in the body. Nature's, Nature's Sunshine carries an herb called Herbal CA. Excellent for that. So you start working with things like that, but number one is you start working with cleansing the colon, and you can see a great difference. Pain, folks, pain always comes from waste. Other than some guy hitting you in the eye, pain comes from waste. <laughs> Pain comes from waste. If you have pain, I don't care if it's in your head, it comes from the waste in the body. And it's no different for your knee. It's no different. Um, the doctor was talking about uh, water, edema, water. Water is the body's way of protecting you. You won't get rid of your waste, so water shows up to dilute the poison because that's all it has left. Fever is your friend. Um, diarrhea is your friend. Um, di and incidentally, diarrhea is the surest sign of constipation. That's the surest sign that you're constipated. That is the body inadvertently doing what you won't do. You won't get rid of the waste, takes the water from the kidneys, runs it through the colon so it can get rid of that waste that's stuck hard on the floor, the wall, the ceiling of the colon. So that's your friend. Vomiting, that's your friend. That's the body saying, whatever's in there, I don't I can't take the chance of running it through the body, so I'm gonna make you bring it up this way. Sweating. I gotta remind you, the first president of the United States, oh George, one who could not tell a lie. <laughs> he died with seven doctors standing around his bed. He had a raging fever. They refused him one drop of water, saying that the water would surely worsen the condition. The only thing that could have saved him was water. And they refused him one drop. The minute he died, one of the doctors said, maybe we should have gave him water. I'm just telling you what's going on. To die in the presence of doctors to me is ludicrous. To go to the hospital to die is even more ludicrous. Yeah. You say, John died yesterday. Was he in the hospital? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> I thought that was a place we went to get well. Walk in the hospital, they wheel us out. That don't sound like a healing house to me. So depend on you. You can depend on you. You honestly can. You can depend on yourself. Yes, ma'am. Number one, diabetes is a name, as most other diseases are. They're just names. Colon is two and a half inches round. 
That's how big our colon is. It's the large intestine. It's about two and a half inches round. For most of us, colon is seven, eight inches round. And for many of us, 12, 15 inches round. Why? Because the body is trying to accommodate the accumulation of waste that we are building up in there. Incidentally, the colon is also about seven feet long. So we're not talking about a little gut. Okay? What happens is when the colon gets big around like this, it displaces all the small organs in here, pushes them out of the way. It's got to have room for that colon. But one of the things, the colon, I mean, the pancreas is right behind the colon on this side. So what it does is it smashes the, it smashes the pancreas so the pancreas can't do its job. So they see that there's no insulin in it. So they start giving you insulin, monkey insulin, or cow insulin, or the worst of all is human insulin. You notice doctors refuse to take um, what they call them? shots for hepatitis that work in um, that work in operating rooms. They refuse to take it. They refuse to take it when they found out it was made from human plasma. They take it from monkey. They take it, but they refuse to take it when it was when it, when they found out it was human. If it's made from you, now why would they do that? Absolutely, they're scared to death of AIDS. That's that's the reason why. So if they're afraid of shots, you should be terrified of them. You should be terrified. That should be a lesson to every one of us. Let me tell you something else. When you start talking about shots, I don't care what it is. Shots of anything. Shots should never be given to anybody. God made no, no, um, he made no, uh, yeah, he made no parts in our body for a needle. He made one place, one apogee, right there, the mouth. He meant for everything that goes in this unit to go through here, to be filtered through this system, and then and only then it was allowed into the bloodstream. When you directly take a shot, it bypasses that whole, it short circuits that whole system. And if it reaches your heart and stops your heart before it gets to, to be filtered, so be it. You drop dead right on the scene. We are not, there's no provisions for, there's no holes in our bodies for shots. Is it a, a, a special diet? Diet, diet, diet clean, yes. But there's also... No, number one is getting oh, working with the colon. Is working with the colon, getting rid of the waste of the colon. That's number one, is getting rid of the waste of the colon. Number two is um, God has given us all kinds of great herbs that has uh, insulin in it. Zucchini, cucumber, um, juniper berry, uva ursi and watermelon. Great, I mean, great. Er, I mean, that is, has absolutely no, has absolutely no side effects to any of those things. Okay? But number one is, if you didn't do anything but work on the colon, you find the doctor continuously taking down your, the amount of insulin that you take because you won't need it. Well, folks, I hope I've shared some information with you. I hope I didn't offend nobody, but if I did, I did it with the truth, and I can't change the truth anyhow. So... What is it that makes you say that the person has breast cancer? Have you ever noticed that you can't go to anybody else to find out whether you have cancer? There's no disinterest. You can only go to a doctor. You can't go to an auto mechanic and say, is the doctor lying? Is the doctor telling the truth? You know what I'm saying? So the, you're, you're only taking their word for cancer. You, you can't get many times two doctors to agree on what cancer is. 
So I'm saying no matter what your disease, it comes from the body's waste. You understand? And the minute you start to clean up that waste, many things change. So number one is you start with working with the colon. Now the medical field is going to say you don't have time. They're going to, they're going to, they're going to make it a, a dire, you know, that you're in dire straits and you need to do it right now. But I'm saying to you, you trust yourself and you trust your body because nobody, but nobody on earth can heal you. Nobody, no doctor, I can't, your mother, your father, nobody can heal. Only you can heal you. And the body has got great, it has great healing power, great healing powers. And what you need to do is cleanse. I lost a mother to a mastectomy. My mother needed a mastectomy like I need breasts. But I lost her just the same. There was nothing wrong with my mother until she had the surgery. And then she was never well again. She lingered three years in absolute misery and died in total misery for no reason whatsoever. 98% of all breast, so-called breast cancer can be taken care of. I had five women that I had to beg to give me 30 days of. I said, you can have the surgery anytime, but you can never reverse it once you've had it. So just give me 30 days with you and I can change that lump in your breast. I had to beg them for it. I got it. They gave it to me. And within two weeks, within two weeks for every one of them, it had totally disappeared and never reappeared again. Because lumps in the breast is a natural occurrence. It's natural. That's the lymph fat, lymph nodes holding waste. If you will get rid of the waste, that lymph node will go back down to its normal size where it will stand guard over you again. That's your friend, your ally, your buddy. It's what will save you. And you cut out your friend. And when they cut out, they cut out all this. Like, like these lymph nodes are not needed. What did God put them there for? Why did he give you all these superfluous parts? You can live without a lot of things. You can live, but you ain't going to live better. You rest assured that the same thing is true with hysterectomy. Hysterectomy does not stop the menstrual cycle. It stops the menstrual cycle from coming out. That's all it does. You build that waste and build it until you die. And you die 40 years ahead of the time you're supposed to die. Change. Yes, sir. Question, sir. What about the glaucoma? They claim that's something that you show me glaucoma, and I'll show you somebody that's been taking drugs for a long time. Glaucoma comes from drug taking. And they even tell you, and, and when you take these drugs, that it creates a glaucoma and cataract. They tell you. They don't, they not even, don't even lie to you. They tell you the, the side effect of this drug you're taking is from, uh, will give you glaucoma and cataract. That's the pressure behind the eye and your ducts go to... Well, that, that's what they say it is. That's what they say it is. They say it's the buildup behind the eyes and all that. The pressure because your ducts won't open to release the fluid. Yeah, but I, I don't buy that story at all. I don't buy that story. I don't buy that story at all. I've looked in the eyes of people who have cataracts. And you know what it, 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 it appears to me to be? Mucus in the head on the inside lens of the eye. And eye bright, the herb called eye bright, is absolutely incredible in helping to correct well, it. Well, suppose you haven't been a person to take a lot of drugs, maybe, but it could just be your wrong diet to cause it, maybe, say, or something like that. Well, of course the wrong diet starts all of our problems. I mean, would that be like, like you're speaking about the mucus or something that builds up the mucus? Yes, the mucus in the head. The mucus in the head. We got, we, so many of us got five pounds of mucus in our head alone. Just, just, then, that's the reason why you can have a chest cold or a head cold. Because that mucus is in your head. That's when you have a head cold. That's the body trying to clean some of that waste out of there. It stops us from hearing. Stops us from seeing. Gives us sinuses. Gives us uh, allergies. Because that mucus is acid and acid burns. And when it burns, we sneeze and call my runny eyes and all. That's all it is. It's just mucus. Get rid of the mucus, totally disappears forever. Is when you get rid of the mucus. But it's just mucus on the inside lens of the eye. Yes, no. Question. These uh, breast tumors that you said you treated, uh, 
How large is the largest in the largest mass of the five people? How large is the mass? Well, one of them was large enough to see. One of them was large enough to see. The others were felt. They were, they were felt. I do not believe. I mean, I, I got to disbelieve in God if I believe that your breast will carry you so far and then attack you. What kind of a God is that? No, it won't do that. That comes from what we have put through our face. I don't care. Let me tell you something. I don't care how bad it is. I had a woman whose breast opened up. Opened up because of the waste that's in it. We put her in golden seal water and that golden seal start pulling that junk out of there. And that was right in Philadelphia. That was something in Philadelphia. That golden seal started pulling that junk out of there. In three days that thing closed back up and you couldn't tell it was ever there. It, um, it can, a golden seal and echinacea combined are so powerful that they will pull gangrene out. Take care of gangrene. Golden seal and echinacea. Add a little capsicum and garlic to it. You've got uh, you got gold. I mean, golden seal, echinacea, and uh, garlic is so powerful they'll kill the syphilis germ. But the medical field, medical field can't. They won't, they can't. They don't have anything that will do that. They they take care of gangrene by cutting off whatever's there. Got gangrene in your head to coffee. No, I'm not kidding. <laughs> Boils is the, that's the waste coming out through the skin. And it's getting your attention. It's trying to get cause boils hurt. It's getting your attention. Yeah, but you the best way to get rid of it 